Hello, welcome to Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume. And today we are talking to my girl, Tara. What's up? How are you? I'm doing great. Great to be here. <laughs> Thank you. She was not originally on the list, but yesterday I was like, hey, are you available? And she's like, sure. So I appreciate that. We are going to just, I'm going to tell the people about you and we're going to just jump right in. Okay, let's do it. Tara is a love rebel who actively rebels against hate and negativity. She helps spread love in the world using her heart shaped sunglasses as a tool and reminder to make the world a better place. Her passion is connecting with people one smile and one conversation at a time. And she believes that love is a superpower. You can reach her at loveglassesrevolution.com. I love that you say that love is a superpower. What yeah. does that mean to you? I mean, when I intentionally started to choose love because it had to be an intention, right? Yeah. Meaning that you wake up in the day and you're like, okay, what's, what's going on today? Who am I supposed to love, including myself? And you're going to find all of these things that are so magical. Like if you're looking for it, um, I don't, I can't tell you the encounters I've had, the, the things that would happen, the things people would say or do. And then I would be like, you're who I'm supposed to meet today. Yeah, I love that. And so it started to get very uh, quickly. I started to understand that that love is is the answer, and it can get you through those spots where are a little bit rough. Yeah, yeah, and I I, I love that you uh, recognize that and that you're honoring that. So tell us a story. I know about how it all started and why you're on this journey right now and just 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 how it started. Sure. Um, so in about 2015, I would say, I'll give you the quick backstory. It was a rough time for, you can see how I'm dressed, I'm Muslim. So it was a little bit of a rough time. And it was a lot of political rhetoric. Um, we were on TV and not in a good way. Yeah. Um, you know, all sorts of things like that. You'll have to forgive the background noise. Uh, I'll be getting ready for work. Oh, okay. and no, yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> so um, it was just like I was living in a total fear. Mm. That's what was happening because, and even people had reached out to me and saying, you know, can I take you to the store? Can I take you to the bank? And I'm like, my God, how bad is it out there, right? So a couple different incidents happened. And basically one day I called my younger brother and I was really, really distraught. And I'm like, hey, I can't take this anymore. I don't know what to do. And I like kind of chatted with him and I cried even for a couple hours. Yeah. He didn't know what to say, but he sent me a meme. It was a little guinea pig wearing heart-shaped glasses. And it said, I can't see haters with my love glasses on. So there, that's what happened. I put these little babies on straight I put them on <laughs> and I went out rain or shine no matter what and um just rocked them wherever I want went because I felt like I wanted to be like that that guinea pig can you yeah. hear that in the background is that too loud oh no you're fine yeah you hear? okay yeah sorry and um here, but it's fine Nowhere to go in the house. All the rooms, by the way, I have different places I can go, but I can't go for a reason. So I can ask him to shush if I need to. No, you're fine. You're fine. So anyway, sorry, guys. But yes, basically, um, yeah, I just decided that, that I had a choice, that I couldn't control all that was going on in the world, but I could absolutely control what was happening to me. Yeah. And I love that. I love that you were, you were facing a difficult time and it was overwhelming and it was frustrating and you did not know what to do, Correct. Uh, but you still chose love even in the, in the depths of despair. <laughs> I didn't realize the impact that would have on my life or mm -hmm. on me. It was at that time, I would really say it was a survival mechanism. It went from 
just being survival because I felt like the whole world was against me. I really had a victim mentality. Yeah. Um, they don't like me. No, but I'm going to go out. Someone's going to hurt me. Uh, you know, all of these things. Because believe me, at that time, uh, hate crimes were up like 67%. I mean, it wasn't a beautiful picture. Right. However, you can't live in that. Like this is, you get one life, you get to choose how to live it. And I am not going to live like that. I'm going to be aware, I'm going to be aware, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to choose that every person coming at me is going to hurt me. Uh, yeah. um, and, and with these glasses, that's exactly what, I mean, it gave me the power to go out, but it gave other people the power to connect. Mm. Because Definitely. yeah, I'm thinking that maybe because nobody had talked to me that much ever. Like, I mean, I smile, I'm happy, uh, you know, and people smile, they do react to me, but I think people would be uncomfortable to say, um, uh, because they're polite, people are polite. So like, they would be afraid to say, I like your scarf or like, you know, maybe they would feel it's offensive. Who knows? But with the heart shaped glasses, they're like, oh my God, I love your heart shaped glasses. And I'm like, oh, they're my love glasses. I choose love. So it just became this thing where, where connection kept going and going. And I told, I went home and I told my husband, these are superpower. <laughs> and I said, we need to buy these and give them to people and make them happy and connect and let them be happy and you know all this stuff so he's yeah. like how much will that cost and and then you know blah blah we end up getting him doing that and then that's how it's evolved we finally realized we couldn't independently finance love in the world and now it's uh we have a website and different things but we still try to do our part and give them away a lot we give away a lot of love glasses yeah yeah i love that i love yeah. that and it's beautiful that your brother he didn't know what to say, but he was like, yes, here, here's a meme. <laughs> well, funny oh, enough, I'll make you smile. Funny enough. We still laugh about the fact that he sent me that meme. He's like, boy, I could have sent you so many memes. I'm glad I sent you that one. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, sparked, it sparked what you're doing now. Yeah. He's so, like, we could have had some other kind of revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Sneakers, you know, who knows? Right, that's hilarious. But it sparked what you're doing now, and it sparked the love revolution. Yes, it absolutely you. did. And for you, and for your family, and the people that you touch. Yes, yes. It, it, I mean, it's absolutely silly if you think about it. It's it, but it's the most real thing that's ever happened to me. I, I, in those, I've met people. People have told me that they literally you know, needed that positivity and that, because when we send them, it's like kind of like a virtual hug in the mail, you know, we just yeah. want to, we want you to be happy. We want to show you you're, you're cared about. We want people to feel they have a voice. They, they can be heard because maybe that's what I felt that I needed at the time. Yeah. So I pour that into what I'm doing. Isn't it beautiful how life works and how um, the ripples work? Yeah. And you know, you um, you never know where where life is going to lead you. I'm sure six years ago, you didn't think that you would be a love rebel, and here you are. No, I'm laughing about it. And the thing <laughs> is that it's it's very funny how something you do can be so insignificant at the time, and then a few years later, you're like, "That's why I did that." Yeah, 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 and it's so obvious. You know, so yes, yeah. I agree. You just never know where life is going to take you. So just try things, meet people, experience things, you know, yeah. and connect with them. I mean, you've mentioned connection a few times, and that connection yes. is key. What, why is yeah. why is connection so important to you? I don't know. I just think I've always been that kind of person that really enjoys people. Um, yeah. You know, some people get, uh, anxious around a lot of people I thrive with a lot of people like I just love it like what you know I mean uh, it depends not like um public speaking kind being in front speaking to a crowd that's not my favorite it's being within and, and um just being just being yeah 
it energizes me. Yeah. That's Which has been difficult during this time. <laughs> right, right. I was just about to say, speaking of, how have you um, survived over the last few months of the pandemic? Well, to be fair, because I love people so much, I feel a lot of time I may have neglected my own self mm. um, in a lot of ways. And so I have... Um, I had to, I had to start delving into the things that, like, I didn't even know maybe what would make me happy outside of myself, you know? So I had to sit there and like learn about that kind of stuff and, and delve a little deeper. Like if it's a true love glasses revolution, it's true love revolution, it has to start with me. And that's what I always say, but was I, you know? Oh yeah. And, oh, yeah. That's yeah. hard work when it that's comes hard, to me. And it's it's constant. It's hard yeah. work and it's constant work because you've got to keep reevaluating and, and checking in with yourself and making sure that um, yes. your values and beliefs are aligned and, and you're walking the talk um, because, you yeah. know, a lot of people talk. Right. But yes. it's, it's that walk. That's that's the hard part. It's that walk. That's truly the journey. It is. Yeah, I agree. Because you, we could say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And 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 that helps um and and because I've put this so front and forward the whole revolution mm. it helped me keep that in in view. Yeah. I mean I, I can't go and cuss out a grocery worker which I never would anyway. I'm just saying like right. you can't do things that people would, you know, if they get upset and flip people off and you know, I couldn't do that the same, not saying I might not have done it. Once. It's a long story, but my point is you really have to, you know, center yourself and think yeah. about what you're doing because you've created this um, way of life and, and it's, it's awesome, but you have to constantly define what's okay for you and what's not. Yeah. And what does love look like? What doesn't it? I mean, there's a lot to it, right? There is. I, I talk a lot. You know, I, I think, you know, like before I started my kindness journey, I was super sarcastic, like super, <laughs> super sarcastic. And, you know, that part of me is still there. And sometimes like I have thoughts and I'm like, mm. <laughs> I understand. I can't say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I consider it you have a tool in your toolbox that you can use. I mean, you never know. There, there's a situation for everything. Yeah. You may need it someday for right. a time and a space that's specific for right. self care. <laughs> right. Keep it aside. Right. So, what, what do people think? Like, do people think that you're like always rosy and cheery all the time because you're you're a love rebel and and love is is what you do and who you are and so do they think that that's just you know you never have a bad day yeah i think some do um mm -hmm. because there i remember um one person in particular who had unfriended me and then tried to uh i they friended me back and they said they're sorry. They wanted to be my friend, but they couldn't live up to being, you know, they weren't being a love rebel. Mm. So they had to unfriend me. And uh, that was something. And I, I really took time. I asked that person to call me. And um, I said, listen, <laughs> this is not easy, this life. I yeah. mean, because you're in a bad spot or negative doesn't mean you're a love rebel. Maybe that makes you the biggest love rebel. Mm, exactly. You know, because I, I feel like it's constantly fighting those feelings that you're, you know, oh, hate negativity you, you, of, of your own self, yeah. let alone yeah. the life around you. Right. You know, and I actually think that I am a person that, can go to the negative um, quickly. Um, I, I feel that in my family, they'll probably not love this, but you know, it was kind of a more of a fear based. I mean, my my father was a you know correction a lieutenant you know in the prison system, mm -hmm. so 
you know, you, you, it's not that you go out and you just trust everybody and um, everything is okay. And so, you know, I grew up with that and that everything, the, when you find this, something you want to do, there's a billion reasons why you shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the one why you should. Why you, know? you should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, I agree with that. I think that this has been an uh, awakening for me to figure out who I really want to show up as, but it's been work because my default goes to, I shouldn't, uh, I can't. Um, yeah. 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 No, yeah, that's beautifully said. And, but, but, but you do the work and you, and you show up and you choose that. And that's the beautiful thing about life is that you have a choice yes. every single day. You get to choose yeah. how you show up in this world. Yes. And um, I had some kind of health things I was going through for a while. So I had some pain and some different things and it really changed the way and the outlook I had on the world. I mean, I, you know, you want to be happy, but you, you, you're hurting. And, um, you know, it, that gave me such a perspective of how else to empathize with people out in the world because so many people are sick, so many mm. people are unhealthy, so many people are not feeling well. And you know, you have to take all these things into consideration when it comes to kindness and and you know loving each other. Yeah. You have to think about them. Yeah. Think wow. you have to think outside of yourself. Yeah. Outside of yourself. Exactly. You have to love yourself first, but then you also have to think outside of yourself. And how Ooh. how you're showing up and, and what you're putting out into the world. You know, it's it's really that simple, but it's also that hard. <laughs> yeah. Simple but hard. I, I agree. Yeah. So you know I love your son Zade. He <laughs> cracks me up. He yeah. I, like where did he come from? <laughs> Zade. <laughs> about Zay. Just, just give him a, a, a snippet, one little story about him or something, because he is amazing. <laughs> Zade, he's um he's a cutie, you know, and I'm not saying that as a as a mom. He was in the did the Phoenix Fashion Week and all of this kind of stuff. So he's 20 years old now. But he's such a goofy great kid. Like he just he passes in different like he just goes to his own beat. So yeah. wears different costumes, puts different, you know, characters. Um, he, you, you just don't know what he's going to come out of his room <laughs> doing, wearing, you know. Um, he, Like you saw on my Facebook, he built a throne and he sat on it and took pictures. I mean, he's just so funny. He's so unique, but, but he's good. Like, this is the thing that I like. He comes home and he tells me when he goes to work, because he works in a customer service and is a cashier at a car dealership. Got it. So it's very challenging because it's high money sometimes. Like people yeah. pay a lot of money to get their car repaired and they don't want to, you know? And he gets faced with a lot of negativity. And he said to me that his prime objective is to turn people's, you know, day around. Like he likes to to make it better than when, when he found it. And I'm like, who are you? You know, he, he he's been listening. So. <laughs> I love that. And I love that he just is him and, and doesn't care yeah. about what you think about him. What, okay. Yes. I'm wearing a uh, toga today. That's fine. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's just hilarious. And I he, love he it. He did wear a toga one day. Yeah. And he's got his kimono. He's into anime. So everything is, Mm -hmm. He's loving the anime and uh, that's a big thing. And he loves to draw. So he wants to do a mural in his room of anime. So we'll see. Very nice. He does. You know, I'll be post next. I'm going to be so yeah. proud. <laughs> well, it sounds like he's an action taker. Like he saw that, that chair and was like, I'm going to take this chair and I'm going to redo it. <laughs> oh, and then, like, two hours later, he had a throne. He took that chair and he brought it home. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and <laughs> he found it in the, in the neighbor's pile in front of their yard. Like they're, they're, you know, every month we have a pickup. So they come and pick up the, 
the junk. And so the neighbor put it out there and he comes dragging this home. And I thought this is going to be in my yard for a week, like a month. <laughs> like I figured I'll give it that 30 days and then I'll go throw it, you know, no problem. Cause right. it was really rough. And lo and behold, he piled that thing in and went to his uncle's house who is known for this stuff. And, um, yeah, he, he, him and his uncle rebuilt this whole thing. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I, and I love that you allow him to be him and don't try to put any constraints, you know, because I think that's what that's, that's unfortunately what some of us do is like, Oh, you're too out of the box. Let's, Let's tone it down a little bit. And you're like, all right, Zay, whatever. <laughs> I love his personality. It's so quirky. It's so fun. I mean, I look back, Louisa, and I see pictures when he was like seven or eight years old. Yeah. And we were at a Goodwill. We, you know, back when you could have fun and shop in the little thrift stores. And there's Zay popping out of the dressing room wearing a cow costume. <laughs> yeah. So... You know, it, this has always been him. And I vividly recall him drive riding to school one day in a hot dog costume <laughs> when he was about 11, 12. So, I mean, this was, this is Zade. I mean, a whole hot dog costume down the street. Right. That's I'm funny. Like, That's funny. And I love it. And I absolutely love it. Nothing. You don't do anything. You, you foster that. You're like, what else you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I really feel like someday he's probably going to be Hollywood or something, you know. Who yeah, knows? well, I, I mean, I believe it. And like you said, he's a cutie. He's definitely a gorgeous man and uh, has a beautiful soul. And so he has the he has the package to go do stuff if he wants to, you know, get out there in the entertainment world for sure. Yeah, I think he has to get his confidence. Like he's good in his own space, but, you know, Got like it. anybody else, you got to. You know, putting yourself out, out is something. Yeah. You know, put yourself out to mom's friends is one thing, you know. <laughs> so I, I hope that he he develops that, you know. Yeah. That push, yeah. Well, That's we'll work with him. Right, right. I'm sure you will. So you have something exciting that's coming mm, up. Yes. Tell us about it. What is coming yeah. up? We have a book that we are putting together that is so ultra exciting. It's 54 authors, including Louisa Garrett. Is that me? <laughs> it is you. <laughs> I looked for, I, I especially was excited about all the, the love rebels out there doing things every day and changing the world with love. And I put the prompt out there that was just so basic. It was basically what is love to you? How do you love? How do you share love? You know, all of this. I wanted to see what everybody's version of love looked like. So we get, we got 54 stories of people and what love looks like in the world. And this book will be out in October. So they're short stories. It's all compiled together. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. What made you want to do it? You know, I think the stories matter. I think stories matter. And, uh, you know, it, it might be selfish, actually, because 2020 is, uh, was rough, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, what can we do to bring more love into the world, more light, more, and not just through my filter, because that's what I believe the Love Glasses Revolution is, is love your way. So mm -hmm. it's very important to me. Like that I don't, that they don't feel that they have to color themselves, you know, to, to right. do it through my lens. And so I'm pretty excited about how, what's, what's coming up. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to like get it in my hands and um, it's beautiful. Like what you've done and how you put it together and, you know, the team that you work with. Uh, as you wish publishing and it's just oh, yeah. a beautiful Kira. Kira is hilarious. We love Kira. <laughs> she is fun, animated, smart. Yeah. yeah. All, yeah. all of those. She's all, she's of, those all things. of the things. And her heart, right? It's right. so like she cares. Yeah. So your heart and her heart had got together and <laughs> created 
this beautiful book about love and it's all kinds of stories. There's, there's no, um, the, the common thread is love, but the stories are all so vast and so different that yeah. it's just beautiful. It's yes. beautiful how people, like you said, through their lens, through their filter, how they, how they view love and, and what it means to them. Yeah, because the stories that came, I mean, um, there were a lot of people that have done things like, you know, they have organizations that they they maybe dwelled on the organizations they had. Um, there are other people that bared their soul. Mm. Um, there are other people that I know at least two stories that they have never shared these stories in the world before. Oh, wow. Yeah. One I'm really excited. Uh, actually, three. Now that I think about it, the other story I'm excited about is um, when we went to visit El Paso. Mm -hmm. with uh, and delivered the glasses there after the tragedy, we met the teacher, LV Flores. And um, she's the one that had the brainstorm to put out like a, a, a basically a, a call to action for people to send postcards to her kids, letting them know they're loved. Mm. Why we, I know, right? And that's why we decided to travel and bring love glasses to the school. And then all of our love rebels helped us donate. But now um, I reached out to her and I semi bullied her with love. I mean, <laughs> semi bullied her. And I'm like, you have got to tell your story. And, and she was just like, no, I don't think anybody cares about. I'm like, this was a worldwide reaction to your post, to your call to action. Yes, it was. You know, so I was, I'm a little aggressive about it. And she, uh, she did. And, and, he had a hate manifesto and uh, her title is the world's manifesto. Mm. And this is going to be, and it was talking about the response yeah. to, to what happened. And I just think that's, I, I'm so excited for all these different stories, but that's just one that sits with me because she, she's deciding to be brave and do this. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I cannot wait to read them all and, 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 just to just to feel what people are going through and and how um, how they stand in the world, how they show up, because it really is about how how we all show up. That's what makes the difference. And Louisa, what's exciting about this book is it's not it's so diverse. I mean, it's Muslims, Christians, and Jewish, and Black, and Latina, and Filipina, and white, and yeah, I mean, all the labels which we're not, I know we're going for the, we are one, we get it. But yeah. in, that, in that is all of this, you know? And it's so incredible to watch like this, you know, we've got tarot card readers and I, I, I don't know. It's just so exciting. Like all the different kinds of people, activists, yeah. um, change makers, like it's, it's going to be a good book. I'm I love excited. it. I love it. Yeah, when um, I submitted my story, you know, we we were talking, we were chatting on the phone, and I, you were telling me about all the stuff. I was like, well, do I need to submit something different? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I was like, wait a minute, let me let me dig a little deeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's but that's so. I I recall your story, but that is such the your heart. Yeah, that's where your heart lies. Right. And it's so obvious. Like, so, I, I mean, I see your posts. I see your thing where your your first loves are. Right. And so it's very appropriate. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, and I appreciate the opportunity of just being part of it and and sharing my heart with, with people. And I'm excited. Cannot wait for October. I wish October was tomorrow. I know. I know. And I... I thought it would be good to get it out before Christmas because that's kind of oversaturated. And then maybe a little bit before election because that's crazy. And just maybe let people know that there are um, strength in humanity, you know, the strength, yeah. there's such vulnerability and strength. And yeah. it's just such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I cannot mm -hmm. wait. Just, just like you said, the the fifty four people that you've compiled together and just amazing. So I can't wait until the world reads it and and gets that boost of love 
from from the book. And I know we're teasing, we're not telling much, but it's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we're giving you a little teasers. Yeah, we're not dropping it. the name yet, but it's a book about love. Just think, just remember that. <laughs> it's about love and in their way. Yeah. So, and, and it really does. Some of the stories you read, you're like, okay, like you have to you're reframing your version of what you thought love was like so that's that's you know plot twist right this is love too <laughs> you're like plot twist yeah isn't it great so it is i love that awesome <laughs> listen you know i could talk to you all day and we have in the past but yeah today yeah. we're gonna cut it a little short <laughs> okay man Okay. Thank you so much for uh, for hopping on at the last minute. I really, really appreciate it. It has been thank so fun just talking to you about all the things. Well, thank you for having me. Always. You know I love to be here. And I and love I, you. I love you too. And I just want to say thank you for what you do every day. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what day of the year it is only because of you. I actually didn't <laughs> see today. So I love that. Thank you. I share it when I, you know, think about it. And when I see it on my timeline and it's just an absolute great way. I mean, it's 365 days of inspiration. It's well, pretty cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I'm just trying to do my part. We all, we all have parts that we can do. And, and that is what I have committed to. And I, and I think it just, it just needs to be said, you know, whether people, um, here one time or if they tune in every day, it doesn't matter. And I'm sure that, you know, hopefully that something that is said that sparks some joy and kindness in people, because that's what I think that's what we're here for. We're here to do more good than not. And so whatever that little bit of good that you can do in your space and however that looks for you, go out and just do it. Someone said to me once, even a tree provides purpose. It's provides shade. It provides fruit. It provides beauty. And that's just a tree standing there. Like, what about us with free will? Like, what are we, what are, what are we going to do in the world? Yeah. So I, I loved that analogy so much. It just made me realize that we have to, to do more. We have to do more. I've never heard that. And that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. A tree is just standing there and doing, you know, what a tree does. And we have the ability to move around and, and do more. So what are you going to do? I love, oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Thank right. you. Wasn't that yeah. profound? That's very. Look, that, we're going to end it on that. <laughs> Perfect. What a tree do. <laughs> yeah, right? Be a tree plus. Be a tree plus. I love it. <laughs> Thank you again, Tara. This has been beautiful. This has been another episode of Make Kind Loud Conversations that turn up the volume. My girl Tara has talked all about love and the importance of it and the importance of being a love rebel. And go out and share your beauty like a tree. Be a tree plus. Be a tree plus. <laughs> we'll see you next week on another, on another episode of Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume. Thanks again, Tara. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>